three, two, one. All right. <laughs> YouTube, what is up? It is another Monday night, and we are here with our Monday night online open mic, a.k.a. the stay-at-home open mic. And as always, we do have a fine show. We have over 20 poets from El Paso, Texas and beyond who are going to be joining us tonight. Uh, a lot of familiar faces, a lot of people who we've come to, to know and love and, and appreciate over, over this last year, because we've been doing this since last April. Um, and we're, we're going to keep doing it because this is you know, a fun place to just come out, hang out, and share our work. Now, my name is Rich. I'm going to be your MC tonight. I am the project director of BWAMS, and uh, <clears throat> we are based out of El Paso, Texas. We're part of Border Senses, a nonprofit literary organization. And, you know, because of this whole thing, check it out. Like, we're going to be able to have an event on the 22nd in El Paso where a bunch of people are going to be coming into town to share their work. We're going to be featuring Stacey Dyson out of San Diego. She's got her book tour um, and she's going to bring along some peeps. You know, Sandy shakes the mic. And and I know we're going to get people from Phoenix and Albuquerque, Urban Cowboy Poet from Cleveland's going to be joining us. Um, so I, I, there's more, you know, we'll, you'll be hearing about it more in these weeks. So first of all, thanks for tuning in. Those of you on YouTube, uh, as always, I encourage you guys to use the comments, use the live chat. Let us know where are you listening in from? And more importantly, like, which, who did you enjoy? Which poets do you enjoy? What lines made you feel something? Or did you learn something? Put that down in the chat because all that stuff helps so much. Um, if you're tuning in live, like extra props because you're, you know, you're a real one. You're here to support. Um, so, yeah, shout out to the YouTube crew. Uh, we are in a Zoom meeting. We got a bunch of peeps here right now. Uh, in fact, this will this will be the most you hear me talk tonight, I hope, because after this, I'm going to go ahead and call people up, people up. If you're not familiar, it's just a space where I'll call up one by one. All right. And we're going to be doing a little bit of traveling via the Internet. So uh, I think I covered everything. Each performer is going to have about five to seven minutes to do their thing. And as always, I'm going to encourage them to share uh, things that they would like to promote organizations or even, of course, their own social media uh, share links to their work, their books, their projects, uh, because we want to celebrate that. Um, and lastly, of course, you know, let's just show lots of love. All right, community. Uh, let's see. So first up, he is a regular. We look forward to him. And he's also like a mainstay now, like at the Tumble Words Project as well. And uh, it's fun to see what he reads at the New Yorican open mics and, and when he brings here, uh, especially when he brings out the cover poem. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring up from Denver. Let's welcome Mike Sindler, Michael Sindler in the house. What's up, man? Yeah, hey. Um, yeah, especially today, I would like to mention the fact that, you know, Denver is Arapaho, Cheyenne, and Ute. Um, land in reality because this is indigenous indigenous people's day and we should remember that uh that being said uh i do want to give a call out to lighthouseriders.org as i always do just everybody out there in zoom land or in um youtube land give it give it a check a lot of great stuff going on and uh, I do, I am going to be doing a feature on the 24th at Y Open Pandora's Box, along with uh, Rachel Johnson and Doc Janning and Francesca Kirkpatrick, who everybody knows from here. And I'll also be featuring on uh, the 7th of November at Like a Block from the Blue out of Scotland, which is Finn Hall, who's an amazing guy. Um, that being uh, that, so I thought I would go ahead and uh, do some pieces that I thought are appropriate for the day. And um, if anyone does feel, you know, as, as an old white guy that I am a little bit uh, culturally appropriating, I, I do, um, especially in the second one, I do apologize when I'm trying to do everything with the most respect. Uh, and this first one is called John Wayne's Grave. And the epigraph, I'm not able to do the voice correctly, but you'll get it. I don't feel we did wrong in taking this great country away from them, if that's what you're asking. Our so-called stealing of this country from them was just a matter of survival. There were great numbers of people who needed new land, and the Indians were selfishly trying to keep it for themselves. 
John Wayne Playboy magazine interview, May 1971. The grave in which John Wayne resides was stolen from a native tribe, Luisano Coahuila Cupino, Unguanas, and Gabrielenos were there before the whites arrived and stole their land, their faith, their lives. Chanting praises to sainted Domingo, the Spanish said, convert or go. The American Treaty of 1848 should, in theory, have improved the state of lives for the indigenous, but promises were less solid than dusk. The pledge to protect Indian land rights was broken almost overnight. By 1852, all pretense abandoned. Natives were pushed into deserts and canyons. These became the reservations filled beyond overpopulation where smallpox and other diseases ran amok and fatalities increased. In 1907, Marion Mitchell Morrison, later to be known as John Wayne, was born in the Iowa town of Winterset to the Indians' lasting regret. For when as an adult the films he made, the worst stereotypes were portrayed, drunk, bloodthirsty, lying in wait for pioneers, subjects of audiences hate. This was how the first people were seen denying the whites their American dream. He was the standard by whom men were measured. He should have instead been tarred and feathered. And this next piece is based on a painting in the American Museum of Western Art here in Denver, which is a wonderful little museum that people don't know about. And it's called Self-Portrait Paint and Indians. Um, by Walter Ufer, who actually was less of an asshole than a lot of the people who came into Santa Fe and Taos and all and set up their artist communes and sort of uh, painted things and made a lot of money off of native culture. And this is called You Paint My Place. You paint my place, but not my people try to pin down the irretrievable. Your paint can't recreate the magic of sacred dances or the tragic cry of the land, a constant sound since you invaded or the way of life that slowly faded. You think you capture our tragedies and traditiones. Consider yourself a sort of court musician, magician, your canvases reap great riches Yet we see not a penny. You sketch and paint our once sacrosanct landscape with color palette drawn from ground you braved. With whites, it's never give, it's always take. You can't appropriate what we are inside, can't understand our sorrow, can't feel our pride rooted in the experience of rapture. Your vision is of a hollow shell in which hides that which you'll never see, never touch, you can never capture. You paint, paint my place, but not my people. You make a myth where none is needed. Your false mirror reflects savage stereotypes. We disappear before your eyes. You paint a lie when you paint my place. You paint only yourself. And, um, after that, I thought I would go ahead and put on the hat and do a piece by Tiffany Midge, um, who's a citizen of the Standing Rock Nation. And this is called Distracted from COVID-19, Attention Shifts to MIA Maiden from Land of Lakes Butterbox. America mourns for the Indian figure who knelt like a supplicant before dairy, fatly blessed our milks, our cheeses, anointed our lands and shores. The Google tutorials surface the boob trick, score the box and fold to make a window for her knees to jut through. Oh, our butter maiden brought all the boys to the yard. Twitter sphere so prostate with grief, 
petitions are launched for the Dairy Princess. Oh, our Pat, oh, Americana, oh, our Dab, oh, Disney-esque, oh, our Dollop, oh, Heritage, the morning procession bears witness. Jolly Green Giant and Chicken of the Sea Mermaid, Uncle Ben and Aunt Jemima, Magically Delicious Leprechaun and Peter Pan, even the Argo Cornstarch Maiden and Mazzola Margarine, you call it corn, we call it maize, spokes Indian, raise stalks in solidarity. Mia, aptly named our butter girl mascot, the only Indian woman gone missing that anyone notices, anyone cares about. Thank you. And as we all know, all too many indigenous women have gone missing and nobody pays any attention whatsoever. So thank you all very much. Mm. All right. Thank you, man. Um, yeah, as always, guys, make noise. Feel free to clap, share, snap, leave comments in the chat. Uh, thank you for sharing that, uh, Michael. Hey, that was dope, Mr. Sandler. That was dope. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely, man. Um, so, yes, also thank you for mentioning that. In the intro, I kind of oh, like filled out all over the place. But, yes, uh, Indigenous Peoples Day, uh, very important to mention and reflect on. Um, so if you guys want to talk about it, bring any pieces, please, by all means. Um, I know last last year we actually did have some some great features to to celebrate for that. We had our uh, voices, uh, yeah. Um, but you know, please, you know, I think more than not as much as a celebration, it's a chance for reflection and 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 so on and sharing that stuff. And of course, yes, I, I can't beat me to it. But yeah, I do want to recognize here in El Paso our our university. Uh, University of Texas, El Paso, aka UTEP, also uh, today officially acknowledged um, that, you know, the, the campus is on indigenous land. So that's freaking cool. You know, um, keep, we keep moving, keep moving forward. All right. So with that said, let's just, let's just keep going. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and join uh, Vail Larkin, who is having trouble speaking today. So they're going to share um as always you guys are more than welcome to to come with any medium so we're gonna allow them to of course uh share some visual poetry uh and so veil um we understand the talking you know you're having trouble so we're just gonna go ahead and take it over to you and you can feel free to share as, as you'd like uh yeah let's go and take it over there thank you Last summer on the lake. She was reading to me on the bluffs above the shore, the last unicorn, and the sun on her hair and the light off the water filled my heart with gold. The sky over the water was streaming, yellow, purple, rose, and blue, rising in towering battlements above and within the skin of the lake. But in the depths, the red bull roared, and wave foam wept, and all the butterflies burned out. Everywhere around us, eyes gazed upward to see phantom dragons rampant in the clouds, flaming the sun down the sky. I alone looked down, watching her, turned away and up with all the rest, and I knew in that aching moment that all our dreams would flee as she followed them upward, inevitably, as I wandered, earthbound and pathless. I heard the sky tolling the end of our story. I watched her face, rose gold, and my heart pulled from me, reaching its desperate tendrils out and out and always toward her, grasping the last strands of our fairy tale, weaving them into the deep fabric of myself, before she slipped away. Awaken today to the loss of my voice. I knew Veil, it before. Veil, really I quick, can you can you pause it? Okay, there you go. Whispering in. Yeah, sorry. I I was just gonna say that the there was a window blocking the.
the video. So now we can see it. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Now, now I'm perfect. Take it away. I awakened today to the loss of my voice. I knew it before, had heard and felt the hiss and catch, whispering into each syllable. Still, today, I felt it. The depth of my loss sinks me. No more songs. No more sweet tones. All nuance and flavor erased, as the air rushes through paralyzed chords. I wonder how long I have, whispering, but not yet vanished. The music is all gone now. My throat protests the slightest hum. I mourn, and weep for harmony. Once I walked away, once I lost everything, and gained myself, in exchange for the stage. Once all options were arrayed, now I find my paths hidden and obscured. And silent, always silent. Walking, running, playing, dancing, singing, 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 singing. All right, thank you. So uh, I know you already left all the important links there in the chat, yes, right? Um, yeah, so guys, go ahead and make some noise. Unmute yourselves. Uh, go ahead and clap it up, chat, um, and leave some nice comments in the chat there for Vail. Uh, yeah, That's magnificent. Yeah. Magnificent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love, I love the multimedia stuff. I mean, that, and it's also like great recordings. And uh, that was that you, was that one of your pieces that you were singing? Well, not one of your pieces, but like, was that you singing? Uh, you can just type it out in the chat, by the way. Yeah, of course. Um, so, man, that was great. And also, yeah, right. it was you. Yeah. Oh, so talented. Like, I, yeah. you shared a little bit last week, but that was really great. Um, do you have anywhere? Are, are those posted on, on YouTube or online anywhere? I can't remember if you mentioned that. There's so much information going in and I, I forget sometimes, you know, but it, um, I'll check those links as well. Thank you, Vale for joining us this week yes, again all right awesome this is the whole cycle on youtube all right sweet check out the youtube channel um shout out to um yo, eddie eddie potastic just made it what's up man welcome you're gonna go on a little later tonight but good to have you as always no uh problem, shout out. yeah yeah um on youtube foundry 37 what is up welcome welcome thanks for tuning in uh, let's let's go and keep it going though. Uh, I did put the next five or six performers on the chat, so just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, up next, we're gonna go ahead and welcome. This is actually a debut 
Uh, this is someone who hasn't been here before, but I have caught performing at other venues. So uh, they're joining us from Monterey, California. Uh, they're a writer, ph photographer, and performance artist. She has a YouTube channel, which I'll let her tell you guys about, uh, and a SoundCloud music page. Um, she's been writing for over 50 years. Uh, let's go and welcome. And, and also, I think this is the debut of a new name. <laughs> let's go and welcome to the show, Bad Cat. Hey, welcome. Richie. What a cool host you are. Very mellow. So. People have such trouble pronouncing my name. It's French, but Dan. So I figured I'd just do the bad and the cat. That's what I use. So um, thank you for having me. It's lovely to be here for my first time. And I was going to say something else, but Vale's voice just knocked me out. I had no idea she was singing. So I got to say, wow, impressive. Um, so I attended another reading earlier today in another country. And they had the really cool, I'm going to do two, two pieces, a very short one and then a medium one. And I thought it was the coolest idea. They threw out five words and then everyone had like five minutes and they wrote a piece. And the five words were hybrid, battery, yellow, chaos, and autumnal. And I had fun with it. I just did a short little thing. The battery is a hybrid. Oh, well, can't you tell? Because instead of turning from red to green, it's just an ugly yellow. Yes, my car is once again stuck. It's stuck in the mucky English mud, and I'm in the middle of yet another autumnal chaos. So that was a cool exercise. I'd never heard of a group doing that. So uh, this is a very West Coast piece, being as I'm from California, and this is what I've been spending a lot of my time doing during the COVID pandemic, and it's called Equilibrium. Equilibrium, equitable, equinox, equifax, equality, and electricity. Equilead, lithium, the scales of freedom and lady liberty, transformation of the Akashic records through modern day technology. Because I'm at the TV screen, I'm at the TV screen. I'm watching movies, not one or two, but three. See, I can change the channels and watch all three. That's how my attention span goes. That's how my attention span flows. I'm watching TV news, I'm watching TV news. I'm watching not one or two, but three. See, I can change the channels intermittently so I can watch CNN, MSNBC, and the BBC. That's how my attention span goes. That's how my attention span flows. Did I mention that I have three TVs? So actually I can watch up to three scary shows, one, two, three, and just look back and forth between the three. I am at the TV screen. I'm at the TV screen. I'm watching scary movies, not one or two, but three. See, I can look at all the channels intermittently. That's how my attention span goes. That's how my attention span flows. I'm watching comedy shows. I'm watching lots of TV news. I'm watching super scary movies, not one or two, but three. See, I can change the channels intermittently. Equilibrium, equitable, equinox, equifax, equality, and electricity, equilibrium and lithium. The scales of freedom and lady liberty, transformation of the Akashic records through modern day technology. Was, wait, was that it? Or it that was it. Oh, me. excuse me. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's like, uh, so I'm going to keep it short and sweet tonight since it's my first time. Mm, okay. Yeah. I saw myself on the screen and I panicked. I'm like, I oh, thought no, you went mute. Video. <laughs> I, I, I was so impressive to you, Rich, that you went silent. You went dumb on me. So anyway. Yeah. Okay. Oh, awesome. Yeah, That's yeah. what I was trying to say. Oh. So you have a, a website. Tell us about that really quick. Oh, I have, well, I have a, my website, katherinebadan.com. It's my photo writing website. And on there are links to my SoundCloud music page. I went to England in 2008 and made a CD of my original music on Dulcimer. Gosh, this is nice. You give people the opportunity. And um, I have a YouTube channel where I have a few uh, performance art pieces of my spoken word. If my memory would better be better, I would do more. I used to remember more. But anyway, that 50, I started when I was two, no older. And uh, anyway, yeah, well, there you go. Thanks for asking. That was nice of you. All right. No. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah. Good. Good having you. Let me see. Uh, yes. Cool. Yeah. All sorts of comments, man. Um, all really? right. And check out the website too. Uh, all right. All right. All right. Where are we at? Where are we at? Looking at the list here. Um, okay. We're going to go ahead and introduce someone who we haven't seen in a couple weeks, maybe several weeks. Um, yo, like, so before we do that, I just want to, cause you know, she signed up um you know 
not to read a poem, but to just to share a statement. And, and, and before that, I just kind of want to just say this, like, you know, these these spaces are, are, are really important to so many of us. And I, I just do think it's important that we we keep things in check when we need to um, and, and that we can share that if we need to. So um, and I invited Lizzie just to share some words on how she's been feeling. Um, and and hopefully maybe some of you guys can can, can relate to that. You know what, yo, I'll just let you, I'll let you, I'll let you do your thing. Okay. So Lizzie, go and take it away. Pat Lizzie, what's up? It's good to see you, Richie. Um, it's good to see a lot of you here tonight. Uh, Richie and some other people, a lot of you have reached out to me privately asking if I'm okay. Um, I'm going to read a statement that Richie knows exactly what's about to come out of my mouth. So none of this is rogue uh, about the last month because stuff needs to be addressed. So to my artist community, for the last month, I have taken a hiatus from, from this due to work, my personal life, and because I have been harassed virtually and in person by several members. This is unacceptable behavior and makes for an unsafe environment. I apprehensively joined this community in January solely to share my art. Making connections is wonderful, but not when it becomes toxic and detrimental to one's health. I've had, um, excuse me, I recently had a terrible case of eye dermatitis, which is caused by stress. And the most stress I've had for the last month is from this community. I would never ask a host to ban another from a mic, which is why I chose to remove myself. But I was also told I shouldn't remove myself and anyone toxic should either behave or choose to leave on their own. In closing, please do not direct message people inappropriately, be crass or ignore artists at mics. And no is a full sentence. I'm gonna say that one more time. No is a full sentence. So please stop taking advantage and disrespecting people as we are here to share art and decompress after a long day's work. Running around to the doctor and pharmacy due to stress of toxic energy is not something I'm going to make routine in my schedule. Obviously not everyone will gel well, but there must be respect and cordialness in order to keep communities safe. Please do not direct message me or unmute following my statement. I ask you to please digest my words and any questions, please ask me at a later appropriate time, not on an open mic. Um, I will be happy to discuss further then. I would like to return to Mike safely, but need to see how the week goes and people's behavior. Thank you for the time. Okay, thank you, Lizzie. So I think just right off the bat, I think, remember, remember her words, give her give some space, some distance right now between what she just said, and something to think about. So let's let's just think about a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of us have been here in these spaces for over a year. So like, I think, sometimes we forget like people re react to things different. Like we have different relationships with other people and we'll, we'll have one type of relationship with someone else or we can comment and talk to them a certain way and forget that we can't do that to someone else. So, you know, like, let's just keep it cool. That's what I'm saying. Um, so that let's keep some space. Um, Samuel Wilson, what's up, man? Good to have you on the, on the, on the live stream. Uh, yes. So like I said, let's go and give that some space to just firm and think about, but otherwise, you know, this is a space for us to share our work. Let's do that. Let's, let's, let's create, uh, let's continue to collaborate as you, as we very much know, all, we all kind of like feed into each other's events as well, open mics and workshops. And, uh, we can only get better if we acknowledge these things, you know, if we ignore it, that, that's not going to fix anything. So with that said, I mean, let's just let's just get back into sharing and performing. Um, it's for you guys. So, uh, Generalissimo, what's up, man? You got cafe, Generalissimo going down. You got you've had so many features. You're just you're just well loved, man. And and earlier you had a nice little diatribe on on candy corn, and it was it was nice to to hear uh, you speak of uh, you know you're awesome to hear you talk about food. Anyway, I'm nervously talking now, Generalissimo. What's up, man? Welcome welcome back to the show. What you got for us today? Well, let's see. I'll, I'll read a few pieces. But I do want to say that, um, as Mr. Sindler had said, that he is the November feature for Like a Block from the 
Blue in Scotland in November, I will be the December feature for Spike of Love from the Blue. Plus, on November 12th, I will be the feature for the birthday celebration of Pick and Mix, which is a British open mic um, hosted by Gary Huskisson, who many of you might know. So um, I don't have I don't have that information in my in the chat yet. And once I get all that information with with all the uh, links, I'll put start putting it in the chat. Anyways, let's go ahead and oh, and next Monday is another Cafe Jonas Mo. Okay, great. Is everybody else pronounces it Hell Wilson, but I say G because you know I grew up in Alabama. I'm, I'm a redneck. Not really, but sort of. Um so I'll just read this, which I read tonight at the uh thing and all at the uh New Yo. Then I might read something extra. Um I soul always sends a nice postcard when it goes on vacation. Oh, by the way, this is all this is a five coup, which is five a five haiku, five haiku stand. Into a poem. So, my soul always sends a nice postcard when it goes on vacation. My soul has been lost and been found quite a bit in my short lifetime. It likes to run off limbs and go hitchhiking through roads not taken, where it gets picked up by forms of transportation like wind and eagles. That is how I know I am one with breezes and a friend of birds. Maybe if I just tried to write normal poetry, my soul could settle. Uh, this next piece is called Tomatoes Are Not the Only Things That Are. And indeterminate hope. Are you a perennial flower propagated from seed blown an unknown distance by wind lodged into soil germinating from wet of rain and warmth of sun sprouting from ground into existence, climbing into atmosphere to breathe sweet oxygen, maybe a few inches tall or maybe several feet, maybe you will climb trellis or wrap yourself around an ancient tree as leaves sprout from your stems buds will appear flowers will happen they might produce nectar to feed hummingbirds and honeybees they might open wide and grow berries or eggplant or tomatoes they might produce perfume aroma they might be picked or pruned for the purpose of romance or you might wilt after flowers and fruit happen to produce seed to be spread by wind or simply dropped and your roots may lie dormant for you to spring forward each next spring more resilient than before. Um, and then finally, a brief history of human spirituality. Thousands of years ago, people were born with only one ear. The ear was created to replace a third eye. The gods or the spirits or Gaia decided humans having third eyes was a wasted privilege. There was no need for hearing when we had third eyes, but suddenly we were functionally blind and needed a new sense to keep us sensible. We heard birds that sang sweet songs, but some birds screeched like banshees, wind and rain and thunder became noises that forced us to stay in our caves this new sense we possessed held anxiety, something altogether new, something that confounded minds beyond the basic purpose of brains. Taking away our third eyes created psychology, being able to hear the world around us created chaos. So the gods or the spirits or Gaia added an extra ear to balance our behavior. Of course, our noses came next, which allowed us to understand we can stink. Then we opened our mouths to express our disgust, which led to speech, which led to language, which led to opinions, which led to trying to make sense of stuff that made no sense, which became belief. Thank you. All right, man. Uh, yes. All right. As always, guys, yes, show us some love. Henry Lee Small, yeah. thank you, man. And thank you very much, Richard and Marufa. And I would also <laughs> like to thank Kit. Is Kit here? Yeah, easier. Thank you, Kip. Where else would I, I be? always have to thank Kip too, because Kip's a cool guy, and he, and he <laughs> is, and he is always he is he is a big part of this wonderful Monday evening event that makes that makes a lot of us feel like we have an extra family. So thank you, everyone. Mm, appreciate that, man. Yeah, um, you guys are always welcome here. You know, we guys share some stuff. And you said uh, the cafe's next Monday, right? Yes, 
it's during the Monday, day? It's Monday. It starts at 5.30. We start reading around 5.45. It runs till about 7.45, but it can run a little late. Uh, it's yeah. just we have to end before the new day, of course. And <laughs> you're welcome to come earlier, come late, early, 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 late. Just don't bring hate. Thank you. <laughs> Yo, I heard a little bit of Eddie Potastic in there. <laughs> Oh, uh, I dig it. Us. Right. I, th- I dig it, man. Um, I was actually planning to the last one, and then I just had like an emergency pop up last minute, so I couldn't. So uh, it's definitely in my sights, though. I want to come and hang out uh, with you guys for just a little bit. Um, cool. Thank you, man. Uh, let's see. Let me look at the list here because I keep changing screens. So many screens open. Okay, let's see. Where are we at? Uh, all right, cool. Yo, by the way, we're kind of letting our East Coast homies get on a little bit. Because um, there's a lot of you guys. That's awesome. I'm glad you guys are here on Mondays with us. All right, let's go ahead and go to, to Knoxville, Tennessee, where we're going to bring up Sky's the Limit. What is up? I'm glad you hey. made it back. What's up? How are you doing? Pretty good? Mm-hmm. Good to see you. Thank uh, yo, you. take it away. Take it away. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and read the poem first before everything else, because it is kind of long, but not really. (laughs) Kind of is. Am I supposed to feel what you think exists? Am I supposed to bow to a notion that you put in a motion and push on your train car to make your work go go far? Because I'm too young to know better. I should take on this fight supporting a fight I was born into, right? Am I supposed to decide that truth's only from your side? And that peace is a suggestion which is not even in the question? Your greed bought my childhood and I wasn't old enough to sell it, but if it were you, her mom brainwashed her is how you tell it. I could have blamed you when I was eight, but you wouldn't have been there to see it over some damn child support you wouldn't pay, but you claim to be a man, so be it. Don't keep blaming Cupid because he didn't make you stupid. Won't even claim what you did. No, you just made another kid. And she is now going through the same shit I ran into. So let me ask you, is she supposed to feel how you do? Because she's yours, are you assured that she will live for you too? Is her 19-year-old brain supposed to exist only for a narcissist? If your answer is yes, in any shape, form, or fist, yeah, the one you threatened to open up and slap her with, the one sending her into way into next Tuesday, and those words I will remember till the date I decay. Then that's my reason I want you to stay in the coffin you'll one day lay in. Because I'm still paying for the belt you wore out on my backside. I'm paying for the wealth that you bore in my mind. So I would backslide into your hands, no, your clutches, oh, your hands, but making it so I couldn't speak what I didn't understand. With every good girls listen to their fathers, I was trapped, and with every good girls don't get angry, my inner child was capped. Silence with mind violence, wearing a smile to hide every feeling. My sadness looks happy, my fear even more joyful. My anger is where my grin's peeling. Cracks revealing everything your biblical upbringing was concealing, but you didn't count on the truth falling out from the ceiling, on the all your train cars derailing your tracks, on the all your notions revealing the lacks of a father who charmed everyone as the snake and the flutist, me, who was the one hypnotized by mistake. You found it funny how you got me to sing, but now I've changed the tones and I hope that everyone in this town buys themselves some new headphones for daddy gave me a name and then he walked away and daddy gave me a name and then he walked away, but he came back just in time for me to say, Father of mine, tell me, where have you been? Yeah, I just closed my eyes and the world disappeared. Father of mine, tell me, how do you sleep with the children you abandoned and emotionally beat? I will never be sane. No, I will never be sane until my mouth is wiped clean of every instance of your name. But still, the question persists. Am I supposed to feel what you think exists, that rage you held against my mother? No. And all I wanted was for you to let my childhood go, but you've never taken no for an answer and probably won't today. So I will speak it slowly in words that took me 34 years to say. I refuse to back a fucking fight that isn't mine and the way you brought me up, pinned me against her by design, but I'm human. 
My life is no Jessica Rabbit shit and I won't be tied to the railroads because of this. What you think exists is not my burden to bear and the buck stops over here, <laughs> not there. Where your secrets end, my recovery began, so keep thinking I'll one day return. This one thing, the only thing I feel is my soul starting to heal and it's not you. No, that is my only concern. Thank you. Oof, oh man, that, that hit. Oh, lots of great comments too. Appreciating your piece. Sky's the limit. So you said you were gonna wait to share your stuff. So go ahead and do that now then. Okay, right now I am nine points away from 700. And then once I hit the 700th point, I've got some, uh, I've got a couple of books that I'm going to publish or at least start the process of publishing. I haven't really been open about that. It's been a little goal of mine. And lastly, um, you can find me, Sky's About Limit. Twitter, sky's the limit, one word, and pretty much all over the place. <laughs> That's about it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, great. Oh, that piece. Ooh. Yes. Check out all the comments. They're praising it. Um, yeah, sky's the limit. It's always great to have you on. Keep coming out. We want to hear about that book too once it comes out um, so we can celebrate it. Okay, so uh, I, I have up next Doc Janning, but I don't see him here. He's not here, right? Let me see Doc in the house. No, okay, cool. So we'll we'll see if he eventually gets here, but let's go ahead then um, and continue. And let's go ahead and go to the Bronx where we have Mr. Ron Mark Thompson. I know, I know it gets late for him, so I bumped him up a little bit so, so we can hear. Uh, Ron, what's going on, man? How are you doing today? All right. Uh, whoops. Sorry, thank you. Yeah, I, I was wondering that you know how 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 was I on the list so so early on? I'm like you know wow magic you know <laughs> so but but that's nice from you, Richie. But I'll stay here to to the uh, to to the end today. I actually have some energy and I always get inspired listening to everyone else. I know. See, that's why today you didn't need to be a me up. Uh, so what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna um, and I know we're not supposed to to comment, but uh, that pen, Lizzie, very powerful, Richie. Thank you for giving us. You you know this venue you know to to speak out you know um the first poem i'm gonna read i first i didn't want to read it's about myself but uh, that pen lizzie you know she was empowering for a different reason i'm gonna read it and then the second uh, poem um i'm gonna it's gonna be a little bit more uplifting um and that, uh, because i don't want to leave you in a sad way so here we go first one I know I've got this sparkle inside of me, just a little bit of inner beauty. It's what barely makes me reach each day to walk through life a little less gray. With it, I manage to get up, perform a few needed tasks. I'd like to do more and to be able to remove my mass. But my inner light does not shine very bright, and it nearly goes dark each and every night. I don't think it ever saw its brightness as full as it could. I know it should have the capacity to do for me more good. Sadly, darkness has consumed my life for too many years. It's been eating away my own hopes and causing more fears. I've been begging to be with myself at peace. I want my demons to be gone to self-release. For too long, my dreams ever too far, never near. Instead, they shatter. They are no longer here. Trust me, I, I have lit the fire, ignited more warmth, I try to give it more energy. No luck. It's difficult. It requires a strong soul, not at all carefree. My sadness keeps returning. It always comes back, takes away my brightness, causes a constant setback. I'm tired of my battles, tired of climbing each tree, tired of the struggles to set myself finally free. Sometimes I don't even know why I'm still fighting. 
not even sure why I, why I reveal all here, why I'm writing. I thought my heart was big enough to give love and hope and in return to brighten my light and jump that rope. I know I should be able to experience happiness. I should be good for someone to pray and to bless. My light should be stronger to fuel me, to make bigger my soul. Why doesn't it illuminate more to fill that emptiness, to make me whole? So I beg you, I plead with you, my inner light, please shine more fully. Please make me bright. And that's the end of the first poem. And I forgot that you spotlight people. That's why I was a little bit shy and didn't really want to be seen. But I guess I have no choice. So because I don't want to feel your honor, I don't want anyone to be sad. I'm still here. You know, I'm going to be here to the end. And again, everybody inspires me. So I'm going to end with a poem that I wrote that, to be honest, I should listen to my own advice. But instead, here I am giving others advice what I really should do for myself. But this is for everyone else. If you need help, if you don't feel well, please say something, just shout or yell. If you need a hug or a comforting word, please reach out. You will not be left unheard. If you want me to listen with my ear, call me. I'll be ready. I'll be here. If you don't want to call or talk, please give me a sign text or message me or our friends, even if it's just one line. If you don't have the strength to type a line, just post a photo to social media so I know you're fine. If you don't want to post yourself or want to go live, just like one of my posts so I know you're still alive. In the meantime, I will keep texting and calling you I'll even visit and keep ringing that your doorbell until my hands are blue. If you won't answer, I'll patiently try to understand. But in the meantime, I'll keep reaching out my hand. Remember, I'm still your friend, your motivator. I'll pray with you. We will. Amen. It doesn't matter what you go through, no matter with whom, what, where or when. Whenever you're ready to make contact and reach back out again, I'll continue to be in your life. I'll go with you through your pain. And for the audience here, I pray that I gave some insight tonight. As always, I hope I made your evening a bit extra shiny and bright. And that's the end. Thank you very much. Yes, amazing. I was already like commenting and I was so excited. I forgot to unmute. Yeah, guys, go and make some noise. Clap it up. Make some noise for, for Ron there. Uh, awesome, man. Um, yeah, I was concerned when you started with the light off. I was like, I've never seen your room that dark before. Like I, I incorporated it as part of a set. Um, in fact, the contrast, you know, afterwards when you, you said, let there be light. Well, I like the way you said it better, right? Like, let me let me be bright started analyzing psychoanalyzing like all the your your environment you know you have you had a, a over your right shoulder you had the the wise owl right the wisdom of the owl and then you had the 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 big smiley face behind you which you could still see in the dark room you know we just had like a knowing wink like i've got you it's good it's good and right below that you got the mug where you used to keep all your pens right where we come up in the brain right? i don't know what i'm talking about i'm just <laughs> but i liked it man thank you for joining and I did bump you up because you do you often sign up like right at the end and oftentimes you have to leave early. So I'm like, uh, you know, I want you to get a chance to perform. Uh, and then, of course, you have all the energy tonight, today. So uh, let's go and keep going, though, because we do have a lot of people. And I want to make sure they get on. Um, let's stick on the East Coast. We have Mr. Ed Poetastic, Washington, D.C. Um, what is up, Ed? As hey, always. Hey, Richie. I'm glad you're. Um... Hey, Richie, I'm happy you're here. I'm happy you you could give me into gear. I'm happy you give me good cheer. And thank you, thank you, thank you for having me here. <laughs> All right, man. hey, Richard, every, oh, I'm sorry, my bad. 
Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll go. All right. Um, hey, Richie and everyone, are you ready for Potastic Fun? Let's shine brighter than the sun. The days are never done. All right. Um, my name is Ed Potesta. Fantastic. Please give me the time if we could draw my rhyme for all of you feel sublime. Okay, here's my poetic chime. This is called Bloody Eyes. I am the one inside your head with razor tart teeth or eyes growing red. Can you hear me? Let me freely scream so you can blow off steam. I'm the one who wants to give you a helping hand when pinheads don't fully understand. Oh, no, 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 you're not bad or mean, but you might cause a gigantic scene. I'm your cage of madness or frustration that's been with you on many destinations. Do you really need a mindful explanation for our inner communication? I am the wild storm to flush away your BS that burns your bare chest. You feel that you feel your absolute best when I follow your request. I am the flame that burns your enemies away and make all your worries decay. What else, what else can I say? I create my own wrath away. I am the yang to your yin, so let me burn, let me shoot arrows and quickly transcend. I am neither your enemy or your friend, but your stress will reach an end. I am your primal instinct, that, but please be in sync. Please don't think, shrink, and blink. Let me hold the wheel to give you needed time to heal from your ordeals. I am the other half you hide down below, but can you hear me roar and bellow? I may be rude, crude, and hollow, but you suffer no more sorrows. I am the bomb that goes tick, 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 waiting to go boom or explode. Yes, your issues and stress will instantly corrode. When I am released, I can't be tamed or come back, but you, but but if you pretty please be on your guard for worldly attacks and physical smacks, I am the beast that lives inside your dark increase that knows no peace. I will blindly attack with your regrets pile up in stacks, but watch how everything slowly turns to black. All right, um, I got one more. This is called, um, this is called a uh, crooked flag. It's not made of red, blue, and white. It's made from ruby tears. Why is American history right? To control our gears. Our ancestors, Black and Native Americans, serve from the patriotic game. We do whatever we can. It's bigot history to blame. Our ancestors slaved to build these pillars in a scorching heat, frigid rain, and below zero snow. After all that, they were in the winners. Why do our contributions come so slow? I hate the founding fathers putting my ancestors in chains. I hate the pilgrims who kicked the Native Americans off their land. Both groups are dealing with backstabbing pains. Now, do you wholeheartedly understand? It's history, cut with bittersweet lies. For what? To reserve a false patri patriotic image. Ma many mothers, daughters, sisters, brothers, fathers die. This is the truth. Don't be scared, get skittish. What do they do? They paint over it to cover these hideous marks. We all want to taste American dream like you. Please stop feeding the blinded sharks. You can choose, but what do you have to lose? It's sad this is supposed to be a land of opportunity, but took away mine and others' dignity. No, 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 it's not a battle of femininity and masculinity. It's not about gender, but him, her, you, I, and we. I know it hurts, but like everything else, it is flawed. Lady Liberty is mute. She can't sing. Why? Her voice has been outlawed. It's not peachy or A-OK. -okay. People die from the bloody American facade. You know, you don't know what to think or say. At least I got you out of the, that ancient mirage. Whenever you look at the flag, truly ask yourself, does it truly represent you or me? Yeah, it's a huge drag, dangling the sun and clouds, pretending we are free. All right, got one more. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, this packs a punch. This is called Dream On. Dream on to catch your planet. Live on to shine your light. Walk on to taste the sun. Run on to feel your core. Fly on to hug the clouds. See on to grasp your horizons. Here on to sense the chimes, fly on to expand the freedom, crawl on to hug the earth, wander on to build the sea, search on to touch the gold, play on to watch the creatures, hate on to feel the storms, cry on to sink the oceans, fight on to hold the lightning, sing on to control the clouds, speak on to call the flames, dance on to shake the lands, 
Sleep on to travel the cosmos. Think on to absorb the skies. Love on to shape the stars. Go on to ride the tides. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. And really quick before you, you go off uh, the spotlight here, um, you got anything you'd like to promote or share right now? Oh, sure. Um, I'm having a feature at, um, on Sunday. It's called Fuma A Live. It's really potastic. It's at 8 p.m. So if you want to show, please, please, please um, listen. And don't forget to, um, don't forget to speak, know, and glow. <laughs> awesome, man. Thank you, Ed. I love it. I, and I just, uh, you know, I mentioned in the comments and, and we called it, I said, I mentioned it as well, but like, I love the, the voice changes and the tone changes because, uh, you know, and I appreciate that, you know, the whole performance of it as well, because I, I remember when you've done erotic pieces, you also do something where you, you turn on like a radio, radio voice and you slow it down just a little bit. Right. Uh, yeah. So, and you, you did the, you did this, the scary voice, you know, and then I uh, appreciate that, man. Cause then you, you hear the change on a, on a dime. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, next thank time, you, you know, next time I'm getting into a rap battle, man, I'm going to, I'm going to bring you in my side so you can be like, <laughs> Cyrano de Bergerac, like just kind of feeding me lines. All right. Anything to anything to to fret the passing tides to make you feel a wine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, man. Sweet. Thank you for joining us, Ed, out of Washington D.C. Um, yo, yeah, always great having you. Uh, let's keep going though. Um, so yeah, we've been we've been doing a lot of East Coast stuff. We're gonna come back home because again this is based out of el paso texas so we're gonna visit el paso for at least our next two performers uh gotta have them back to back uh because it's also the birthday month kind of we, we haven't even talked about celebrating but that's another thing right there uh let's go ahead and welcome up to the stage our monday night mv lee lee ms <laughs> what's up hey all right so i have today is national coming out day and tomorrow is Indigenous uh, People's Day. So I have two poems for that and then a new one. So I'll start with an old one. Uh, this is called Arbol. Light skin, white skin. Should I skin my skin and let the blood pull under my naked feet? Sit up for close inspection to determine my genes that I know nothing about. There's nothing to claim, reclaim, regain, lost too long ago and erased, renamed, retraced in hopes of finding answers, but found revision parts of the side I never knew and romanticized parts of the plundering past, the branches that grew me passed on to me. So that leaves the question of who am I and where do I come from? Will I pass nothing to the canopy of generations who share the blood of unholy and revered ghosts? Will I understand this blood and tie down its magic to a land I have never stepped foot in? or instead feel naked feet burning with a touch of asphalt and the longing to know who, what am I, and why? Where am I going under the glowing lights of this desert? Where has this blood been spilled? And I trace, stare in the mirror in hopes of finding a semblance of the names I never knew. The India Washishil, a name, the abuelita who was some sort of Indian erased, but now in the embrace of the little percentage of us that I know and how much of us I want to know. Whisper its meaningfulness to the deaf ears of the three that birthed us, faltering leaps on the canopy, only capable of seeing the roots when they finally wither. The likes of me wandered up the rod, climbing up our branches, while the others, carried by the wind, let themselves go. But not anymore. Not one more name of me, of them, of us, will be erased from the almanacs of our history. Call me historian, scholar, time traveler, Carrier of half real, half imagined stories of who, what, where, and why. That's one. And the next one, check this out a second. This is in honor of National Coming Out Day. It's called I'm Here. Transsexual. It's when a woman wants to be a man. Corrected on my own self of sense of self, my previous works erased by outdated terms that could only come out of the ashen lips of a dinosaur who should have retired many centuries ago. He asked, what does your husband think? Won't he miss hands squeezing the air between them and his chest? The only eye, the only eye contact I had through the session happening as he mimed hands groping breasts. I sighed in all stations of grief and landed on this belief. I shook my head no and reassured him again with a, 
I can bring him in if you want to. He's waiting for me outside. Head shaking, pen scratching against a jello notepad. I will have to diagnose you. A test, some sessions, then I can make a recommendation. I thought, I was not aware I was sick. I said, would that help with getting my surgery? I thought again, why should I ask for permission? Therapy, then maybe hormones, then maybe after a few sessions of me paying him to tell me what I had already explained, surgery. He ushered me through the door, impatiently handing a note to his secretary and murmuring, set her up for my name and PI for next week. He disappeared behind the closed door of his office where I had told him my illegal name, my undocumented pronouns, my body's immigration rules. I thought them, capital letters, full stop. Meanwhile, the secretary called me by a name I had buried six feet below ground ages ago. While looking at my paperwork with my illegal name, clearly written across the preferred name option that apparently was only there for decoration. I thought Lee, one syllable, ambiguous, mine, but I said nothing. You won't see him that day. It's just an exam, three hours, bring some water. I said I would call a letter time to schedule it instead of ignoring her dead name me and misgender me for the sixth fucking time of our interaction. I hanged the phone on her days after when she called asking for dead name, informing her of a copay. I said, I don't know her. Repeat this exact experience, only I have wasted months with him. His performative allyship apparent only when he talked about friends that gave no permission for him to disclose their lives and out them to a total stranger. Stranger, I thought, will he ever shut up? I nodded and tried to interject here and there, interrupted by his complaining of, oh, all those made up labels and comparisons of the collective us to child predators infiltrating our already vulnerable cultures. I thought, oh, fuck no, and tried to correct him. He gave me two books and sent me home to find other ways to cope with dysphoria, stop astral projecting out of this neat prison, and maybe distract me from finding made up words to define me. He called me months after, after he realized he missed those 30 bucks a week I had added to his budget. I let it go through voicemail, deleted, let him unread, deleted, then blocked. Wasted my years from 22 to 32 trying to find me and end me. A decade word of the same old, same old where I learned to hide myself from specialists, a care team that I should have been able to trust. Yet still being out and about in the company of my hairstylist, piercers, tattoo artist, and strangely, my OBGYN, who showed more empathy than any other piece of, sh piece of shit therapist, psychiatrist, social worker ever did. I thought, this is not on my terms. And I said it out loud too fed up already to pretend. I thought, well, if following these rules has only postponed my transmutation for 10 years, might as well use these anchors that are me across borders to falsify the anguish, to make it just strong enough to be alarming? What's one more anchor, baby, doctor shopping, shopping across the border? I asked of them to circumvent the insurance policies, made accomplices of the empathic people, people who have made unsafe places feel safe, even welcoming. I set my pronouns, my transition goals. They justified procedures with minor circumstances so that I could live and just be. I am here and I'm not going anywhere. For those not on the know, my name is Riordan Lee Martinez Soto. Roll your R's, get that acento right. Don't come at me with your gringo version because you can't be bothered to learn. I break the boundaries of the binary. I am gender chaos, gender unknown, Gender 404 not found. My pronouns are not optional. Plural they because the singular cannot encompass the vastness of me. I exist and I refuse to be defined by others. Second one, uh, and this is the last one. Uh, here we go. This one, Ms. Donna Snyder gave an, uh, an amazing workshop this past Saturday on the TumbleWorks project. Um, and we were talking about, about justice. And this is something that I'm passionate about because it happens a lot in Paris. So this is called My Sister's Voices. The sound of my sister's voices echoes through continents. Names unheard of from areas of a map no one cares to learn about. Rosita's abandoned body. Rosita's discarded body. Rosita's 13-year-old body. The last light taken this September. My sister's mother's voices resound through every street every pothole, every poorly lit threat, deafened neighborhood, unmarked graves. While the unnamed, 
15, 16, 17 year old minors violating and murdering other minors keep their privacy intact. My sister's voices every day ask for us to say their names. Remember more than just another number on another channel or another study from another country. Faceless and forgotten inside a suitcase, one foot in the grave, the other one trying to escape. The first light extinguished this October. Who took your light? Who took your breath? Who took your name? Remains unseen. Living life like yours was never even taken. The remaining 137 voices of my sisters just this year remain unheard. And their mothers have yet to hear the names of their daughters on the rundown of today's body count. And that's me. Man, that one. Uh, we always need the reminder. Yo, thank you, Lee, um, for sharing those. Man, I missed that workshop. Um, so what do you do you have anything coming up? I mean, oh, actually, I know that you do. Please uh, shout it out into the universe. <laughs> So I have a Tumble Works workshop this Saturday. Um, I will be hosting a workshop for shadow work. If you want to attend, it's at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, I think. I think, yeah. Yeah, 1 p.m. Mountain Time. I'll share the link in a little bit. Um, on the 28th of October, me and a bunch of other uh, spooky writers are uh, being featured on a vocabulary for uh, Spooky Month. Uh, so that's another one that you should attend. It's also open for signups, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and aside from that, two books came out, well, two publications came out already. We're waiting for the Chrysalis publication from EPCC to come out. Um, and yeah, hopefully more to come. And you can find me, uh, let's see if you can, there you go. You can find me here. Awesome. Perfect. Screen, we got to do the click. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lee. Uh, yeah. Oh man, isn't that link tree amazing? You just like take all the links and consolidate them to one. Like ah, there it is. Boom. Less to write. Um, sweet. Um, there it is. And I gotta make sure to post that on YouTube as well. Again, shout out to everybody right now who is watching on YouTube, whether it be live or at some point in our future, your presence. It might even be me. Maybe I'm watching myself talk right now. Isn't that awkward? Uh, anyway. Let's go ahead and keep it in El Paso. We had some cool names of publications. Our next performer is published and, and one that we were able to put together called Life in the Time. Uh, a bunch of our El Paso poets are, are on there. It's really exciting. We had an awesome reading in which uh, poet Khan started reading and then it started thundering down, raining crazy. And, and she, she, she stayed up there. I'm like, awesome, go Khan. Also, my speaker might be ruined. Dang it. <laughs> but she just posted that picture. It's really cool. Uh, I need to check it. Anyway, our next performer is in that. He got to read. You guys already all know him. He's been mentioned by name on the show. He's been planting some syllables and some images. And up next, he's going to share some of that poet tree. We got Kit Wren, Mr. Monday Night. What's up, man? Uh, it's all going great, man. It's all going the way you would hope. The way you would. <sighs> I love you all. Did y'all know that? Just want to make sure you know that. Because some, some people don't know that. <sighs> okay. All right. Two of mine and then the cover poem. And I also want to read a portion of UTEP's uh, land acknowledgement that they just published today. Uh, because we acknowledge that we meet on unceded indigenous land and would like to recognize and pay our respects to uh, the indigenous people with long ties to the immediate region. Uh, Lipan Apache, Mescalero Apache, Piro, Manzo, Suma, Humano, Isleta del Sur Pueblo, Piro Manzo Tiwa Indian tribe of the Pueblo of San Juan de Guadalupe, and Tortugas Pueblo. And we also acknowledge the nations whose territories include present day Texas, the Carrizo and Comecrudo, uh, Co excuse my pronunciation, uh, Coahuitian. Uh, Caddo, Tonkawa, Comanche, Alabama, Coshada, Kickapoo, and the peoples of Chihuahua in northern Mexico, from whom our students descend, such as the Raramuri, Tepehuan, Wixarica, and Nahuadaca. Okay. And now two of mine and then the cover poem. I am changing all of my drafted memoirs back into poems because too many of you know my business. 
I want the ritual of a public confession, but I don't want you to know what I did. I am much more comfortable answering what does this mean than what happens next. I want this poem to rise from the ground like a monolith, not between us, but beside us, and for us to circle around it, inspecting for the flaws that I have mistaken for nuance and character. And another short one, but as uh, our friend Lee mentioned, today is National Coming Out Day. Uh, I'm the boring kind of straight person, but I want to make sure everyone feels loved because that's important. So I want all the trans men growing their first wispy, irregular beards to know that I am proud of them. You had a very specific dream and fought against all social currents to both be and become yourself. Pretty soon, this will just be another thing to keep clean. A ruler-ready measure of sloth. But in the same way that unathletic eye can tell what a coach said wrong by the way his sophomore safety backpedals, I suspect that you know more than I do about this masculinity racket. Okay, and the cover poem, uh, I've picked something by uh, Natalie Diaz, who is uh, a uh, Mojave Gila River uh, tribe Indi Indian and has written uh, wonderful poetry about, as, such as this poem, The Facts of Art by Natalie Diaz. The Arizona highway sailed across the desert, a gray battleship drawing a black wake, halting at the foot of the orange mesa, unwilling to go around. Hopi men and women, brown and small and clay-like, peered down from their tabletops at yellow tractors, water trucks, and white men blistered with sun, red as fire ants, towing sunscreen slattered lives in glinting airstream trailers and caravans behind them. Elders knew these BIA roads were bad medicine, knew too that young men listened less and less, and these young Hopi men needed work, hence set aside their tools, blocks of cottonwood root and half-finished kashari the clown sinas, then signed on with the Department of Transportation, were hired to stab drills deep into the earth's thick red flesh on First Mesa, drive giant sparking blades across the Mesa's faces, run the drill bit so deep they smoked, bearding all the Hopi men in white. Bad spirits, said the elders. The blades caught fire, burned out. Masala is angry, the elders said. New blades were flown in by helicopter. While elders dreamed their arms and legs had been cleaved off and their torsos were flung over the edge of a dinner table, the young Hopi men went back to work, cutting the land into large chunks of rust. Nobody noticed at first, not the white workers, not the Indian workers, but in the mounds of dismantled mesa among the clods and piles of sand lay the small gray bowls of baby skulls. Not until they climbed to the bottom did they see the silver bones glinting from the freshly sliced dirt and rock wall, a mausoleum mosaic, a sick tapestry, the tiny remains roused from death's dusty cradle cut in half cracked, wrapped in time-tattered scraps of blankets. Let's call it a day, the white foreman said. That night, all the Indian workers got sad drunk, got sick, while elders sank to their kivas in prayer. Next morning, as dawn festered on the horizon, state workers scaled the mesas, knocked at the doors of the pueblos that had them, hollered into those without them, demanding the Hopi men come back to work then begging them, then buying them whiskey, begging again, finally sending their white wives up the dangerous trail etched into the steep sides to buy baskets from Hopi wives and grandmothers as a sign of treat. When that didn't work, the state workers called the Indians lazy, sent their sun hat wearing wives back up to buy more baskets, Katsinas too, 
then called the Hopis good for nothings before begging them back once more. We'll try again in the morning, the foreman said, but the Indian workers never returned. The BIAs and DOTs calls to work went unanswered as the fevered Hopis stayed huddled inside. The small bones half buried in the crevices of Mesa in the once holy darkness of silent earth and always night. Smiled or sighed beneath the moonlight while white women in airstream trailers wrote letters home, praising their husband's patience, describing the lazy savages, such squalor in their stone and plaster homes, cobs of corn stacked floor to ceiling against crumbling walls, their devilish ceremonies, and the barbaric way they buried their babies. Oh, and those beautiful, beautiful baskets. All right, right on, man. Thanks for sharing that. I missed the intro. I was I was getting some coffee. What what was that a passage from? Um, that was uh, that was a whole poem. That was the Facts of Art by Natalie Diaz. Ah, uh, it's in her you. 2012 collection. When my brother was an Aztec. Hmm. Got you. Thank you, man. Um. So, what do you do? You have your sheet there, man. You'd like to share? I do. What we got here? Ah, get the light right. There we go. Instagram kit run away. Uh, Twitter kit talk sports, um, bellatristic essays about national football league stuff, kofi.com slash kit Also a mechanism to donate with if you want to, uh, Facebook at my name, cause that's my name, uh, PayPal at email, email at email. I have a Goodreads. You can look me up on Goodreads. I talk about things I like. Mm, hell yeah, yeah you man. You can see me here every week. <laughs> appreciate that man and of course uh we'll we'll get you uh hosting as well uh most of you guys already know so thanks man for for being a part of this as always and for all the help uh and you know if you guys know like if if anything happens to my internet get kicked off or whatever kit will seamlessly take over and raise it up to another level uh <laughs> so maybe i should just like pretend like oh no my internet is going out no it's, it's not but um let's see it has happened at least once now so um what i want to say with say about that yeah b wom's legend for sure <laughs> so we go from one guest host to someone who was also guest hosted in the past and we'll be doing so in november uh joining us from jersey the man of many many nicknames in fact he has an awesome poem about it uh we got Nick Paleologos up next. What's up, man? Nick, good to have you here on these Mondays, dude. It's always great seeing you. What's up, Richie? What's up, Kit? I'll be back here in November. We're going to do this uh, thing. It's going to be lit. Uh, I can't wait for that. But any event, we came for uh, my poetry for now. We got three new haikus and two pieces. One short, one First one. Fuck the jackasses, especially Columbus. Terrible person. A holiday to say no to, Columbus Day. He was a phony. Poet with no cash. Poetry is taxation. Pay up with your soul. Haikus. This is a new one I made in the room. This one's called Not One of Us. Hey, Christopher, you are certainly not one of us, nor were you ever. You have all this pompous, boisterous, dumb day. What exactly am I celebrating? How? You were a jackass? Idiot thinking that you could get to India by just sailing across the Atlantic? Did you know that the Italians already knew America was there in between? I mean, they didn't need ESP to read your mind. They could smell your spoiled marinara from afar. What am I celebrating again? How you murdered, raped, sold off children, made bets about a clean cut through a body like it's DraftKings? What exactly am I celebrating again? Columbus, you a whole idiot, a disgusting individual. You are no longer worth my breath anymore. 
I will celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day. So. That was the piece. And let's close with actually something that's not talking about Columbus. Fuck Christopher Columbus. Let's do this one. I like this one a lot. This one's called Looking for Penance While Hiking. And it will be in my upcoming book. Courage. Do you have it? Strength. You better show it. See, this world, Nick, is full of minds, mundane headlines that are not worth a click. Better use your eyes. Utilize your grit. You are trying to build a legacy. See that mountain over there? Climb it. Trek up. Sink your fingers in the rock. Feel for crevices. Don't slip. Grip into the mineral. Hug your planet. Don't look down. You will fall 20 feet. This challenge will be the inner achievement you never knew you wanted. It's not a show off if you don't show up. This man versus wild lifestyle you cannot live with forever. Bask in the awakening from muddy trails to happy tears hitting the apex. They say it was about 20 feet. You know it was at least 30. The feeling you experienced was dirty. Appreciate the view from the top. The climb down is much simpler. Maintain your stride. Tired you must be without any climbing material. No one can take it away. No need to prove it again. The aspiration to climb the rock was an epiphany. You have the strength, the courage through your misguided ways. You have a resilience that few could match, very few could match, exceed even. See that mountain, that new mountain? I want you to do me a favor before you go climbing. Enjoy the moment. Take in penance before you go climb another mountain. And that's my set, everyone. Yeah, man. As always, guys, clap it. It'll make some noise. Show some love on the screen. Make, get excited. <laughs> oh, yeah, Nick. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot to take off the spotlight. <laughs> uh, yo, so what do, you, what do you got going on, man? Speaking of spotlights, uh, feel free to spotlight what you have coming up. You can always follow me at the real Nick P on IG. Um, like, I, like Richie said, I'll be hosting in November. That should be late November, like around the 29th, I think we agreed upon. We agreed upon the 29th. Um, I have some features in the works, so keep a look out for that. I'm not giving definite dates because they're in the works process right now, but you can see more of my shit, which is pretty cool. Um, my next open mic is the 20th. Yes, it is the 20th. It is next Wednesday, 9.15 EST, which you all should come out to. It is a great time. I'd we'll love to see you all there. And, uh, yeah. Oh, Richie, may I say something real quick? I wish yes, to say that I, I have read this Adverse Reaction, which is the title of Nick's book. And it is so, excuse my language, people, it is fucking awesome that come December, everyone is going to go broke trying to buy it and buy this for people by just by I, yeah it, <laughs> adverse reactions is gonna it's gonna be lit i agree generally simo thank you for the shout out for that that is the title of my book it's lit y'all should come check it out you know once it comes out um thank you again everyone thank you for listening and thank you richie kit Polcon, all that you do Yo, thank you, man. Thank you. I'm looking forward to that. Yes. So you heard that. Start saving up for the next 10. You know, go back to the, the original 10, too. You have not had a chance already. Um, you know, Christmas is is we get we're gonna get there sooner than you know than we know. So, you know, if you if you do Christmas lists, go go send them a link to the to the the red or green books website or you know where you have all those books posted. Start start collecting them so you can you can give them to people, all your tios and tias or or family members that like. What do you want this this year? And you're like, 
check it out look at this book list right here uh yeah definitely start planning that cool thank you nick we're gonna go ahead and go from coast to coast we're gonna go to the west coast now and and we're gonna go to washington where we have letty making a, a triumphant return we missed we missed them last week uh but i think you're, you're still here with us right yeah letty. what's up hey cool hey, hey welcome back glad to have you uh go and take it away all right. Thank you, everyone. Um, just got a couple of pieces and I've been listening to people shared and like a lot of people, I actually um, have been writing for quite a few years. And um, but really just you know something about the pandemic and being, you know, in this situation here, it's just gone skyrocketed this past year. So I'm kind of grateful for that. So um, thank you for allowing me to share some of these pieces that I wrote over the past few months. This first one is titled um, Peyote Cookie Dreams. Pleasantly drifting, unmoored, mermaids, breasts glistening under the moonlight, areolas a deep, luscious shade of brown, a bevy of sirens sing to me, shimmering blue, red, purple tails with fins spread wide, flicking at, tickling at, licking at the air. My mind drifts, vanilla ice cream, the purest banana bits, each slice chopped smartly into four quarters. Four quarters, one cancels out the other. I giggle, I giggle. The mathletes would have welcomed me with big, hairy, brown arms akin, open wide as to embrace you con amor, or perhaps a ploy to bring you closer before crushing your skull with her mama jaws. For a skinny minute, I relish the immediate satiation of that stoned and hungry part of my brain. Little lamb hooves tap, tap, tapping rhythmically, a dream state conga in the air. Couch lock is creeping in, a time bandit. It's a gentle, soft nudge, like dozens of tiny fingers on either side of my neck, pressing down, reaching higher. Warm, like soft, wet kisses. Droll, wee raindrops at the base of my brain. The stem, la reina, the holy grail of gray matter. A pause, as if to hold a note a few seconds longer, only letting go at that last minute, simply too haunting too beautiful to not let go. Little fingertip, little finger lips on fingertips caressing my jawline, not unlike the soft strokes I bestowed on my own babies. Feather soft touches across furrowed brow, tight with all the weight of what could possibly concern an infant. Dry diapers, timely feedings, tummy rubs and long naps. naps. Infant nightmares, wait, nightmares. That's to assume that at the tender young age of barely born, babies have an experience with fear. No, it's a sour tummy. A cucharita de miel, de abeja, with tea de chamomile. My own abejita, la curandera del barrio, dispensing her wisdom, herbs, and prayers in a more formal setting, in the lightly lit living room, dancing figures on the wall, shadows from a 600 pound zenith. My body no longer airborne, now like a mummified lead weight, buried comfortably deep in the mattress built of air cells within blocks of cells, all contained in a much larger cell in a bid to provide the most comfortable sleep ever, six months, money back, no questions asked, even about that odd stain guarantee. Unable to move, or rather, unwilling to disturb this moment, my breath and heart in the rhythm as one, I grin like a baby. My already heavy eyelids drop lower, seductive only like an obsidian desk reflection within, within reveals your and my metamorphosis in terrain. Oh, sorry, let me get back to that. Thank you. Uh, I accidentally just logged out. <laughs> okay. There we go. So this actually is a piece called When They Called Me a Coconut. Um, real quickly, so my parents, you know, first generation, uh, well, my, my mom was there, but uh, right across the border in Nuevo Laredo, in Laredo and San Ignacio, right? So my whole family's from there, farm workers, ended up in Idaho. And I lost my father at a pretty young age, I was nine. And then my mom married this most wonderful man, Bill, who happened to be Caucasian. And kind of brought me into a whole different world of experiences. It was also a struggle for me as a teenager because, you know, being a Chicana, right? And then all of a sudden being this whole other, I mean, I hate this, a different world entirely. 
So this was something I, I actually um, struggled with when I was in school. So when they called me a coconut, when they called me a coconut that day, because I wore polos, Levi's, and leather night Cortez, member of Black Mary Jane's with Dickie Chinos from Kmart. My chinos were from Banana Republic. Because I golfed and played the violin, both exceptionally well. Because I knew how to function with the formal table setting. Because I dated white guys and hung out with the white crowd. This is the same crowd who would smirk and laugh when someone said beans, expecting me to laugh with them. That period was the beginning of my 35 year plus affair with the word fuck, as in fuck you cracker. Giggles, uncomfortable laugh here in the ah, just joking there. Me too. I'd reply with a look on my face that read, I wish a motherfucker would. I preferred white dick apparently. Never mind, Esperanza, that I'd known all these boys with their few straggly chin hairs and zits on their scrawny brown shoulders. I'd known most, most since we were toddlers and knew better than to date any of them. Aside from the puto distaste of the machismo, even then I knew it was pussy that I loved. Love, I wanted to shout hers, theirs, yours. Soft, hot, wet, gleaming, pink, purple, brown flesh. While your secretos, Graciela, son de, son de vergüenza at all the vatos knowing you sucked your man's cock because girl, good girls don't do that. You'd suddenly become one of the others. The one you don't take home to a ma, all for a little head. It wasn't like that for me. Fumbled attempts at cupping a breast, tongue shoved in my mouth, sticky hand on my nape, pressing down. Seduction in the backseat of Papi's lower Caprice classic and metallic brown. The feigned innocence, coyness, not me. I fucked for sport. Her, her, him. Them too. I wondered if my taut summer hot, summer honey brown skin against their own pale white excited them, turned them on. A couple of times I'd been asked in the middle of a fuck fest to say something Spanish. I would whisper sweet nothings in her ear. Nada, nada, nada. She would giggle, then I would suckle on her lobe, run my tongue alongside that muscle in the neck. Guys would beg me to say something, anything. Their every thought focused on their cocks. Tu tienes una pena de niño. Ripping their ball sack firmly in my hand. It was almost, I was almost always bored as fuck. A breathless fuck, then a groan. No one ever figured out what I was saying. Well, I was fucking every stereotype in the breakfast club. You were at home, waiting for that call that never came. Your mama already planning for nietos when they called me a coconut that day. Hmm. Yeah. And sorry, Ben. Man. The last piece I have, just pretty short, it's called Words in Motion. I adore languages. Letters are sexy. Words turn me on. The way they sound. Once they enter your mind and work their way from thoughts to speech to musical notes, deep bass, lonely oboe, playful piccolo, sad cello, sullen sax, exuberant xylophone, crying violin. I watch your mouth intently, your tongue the conductor darting about, landing lightly, slightly on your bottom lip. Words spill out, tumble from your glorious mouth like brilliant blue butterflies. Your brown hands move and flail about as if to support the words. Sorry, I just lost my data. As if to support the words. I just lost something. I'm so sorry. Give me a second here. The words that hang in the air between us. I adore languages. Letters are sexy. Words turn me on. The way they sound once they enter your mind and work their way from thoughts to speech. Musical notes. Your deep brown eyes flash, dance with the conversation. The tempo furious, quick, unrelenting. You stare at me, dare me. I adore languages. Letters are sexy, words turn me on. From thoughts to speech to musical notes, deep bass, lonely oboe, playful piccolo, sad cello, someone's sex, exuberant xylophone, and crying violin. Thank you. Wow, the imagery all throughout all those pieces are amazing, Letty. Thanks for Thank sharing you. them. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Right, Ooh, the painful, low, the crying. like I love even that that uh, right there. Um, so we're I know you mentioned it before. Uh, where can we find you online to support your work if you if you'd like you to know, share anything? I apologize. I had my little sign, but I lost it. But I just you know, let these solis.com. 
and I'll put it in the notes and I'll put my IG address in the, on, on the chat here too. All right. Yes, please do. Thank you so much. Uh, and it's always great having you on. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Um, <clears throat> very cool stuff. Uh, that's on YouTube. It's there, you know, we got the archive of all our past shows. So, you know, it's, it's always fun to go back and listen to re-listen to stuff too. Um, all right, let's see where are we going to go. So we're going to go from Washington to the land of Cleves, where we're going to meet our friend, urban cowboy poet once again for this Monday night, Mr. UCP at the place to be. What's going on? How are you doing? All right. Um, I'm doing great. I, I don't do anger or passion or even relevance. I do urban legends, <laughs> as you know. This is one I haven't done in a while, so maybe not everybody here has heard it. One, like the second one I wrote, one of my favorites. Chess Master Disaster. Every Russian boy who ain't a fool is thought to play some chess. Nikolai Titov, just out of school, is thought to be the best. Fans followed him on his journey towards becoming a grandmaster to this most important tourney, not suspecting a disaster. Nick was leading the championship, which lasted seven days. Every pair of Kibitzer's lips was singing Titov's praise. The way he moved his rooks and queen and pushed his pawn flanks, the opponents thought that they was being squished by Russian tanks. He jumps his knights around with joy until checkmate he forces. You could tell that Moscow Cowboy must truly love his horses. Oops, sorry. Let me go back. He'll earn the Greek, he'll earn the GM title if he can win this game. Otherwise, this night will only bring chagrin and shame. Test clocks were ticking. Last round started after dinner. Had a little technical difficulty here, sorry. Okay, I'm back. Test clocks were ticking. Last round started after dinner. Smart Money was picking Nikolai to be the winner. He didn't want to sweat the show. His opponent sat there grinning. Titoff faced his toughest foe, the dread Sergei Dubrinin. As Nikolai began the bout, he seemed in the groove, not hassled. He calmly bowed his pieces out. On the seventh move, he castled. He played the way he'd won all week, opening files and setting traps. But in a while, his game looked bleak. His position had collapsed. He'd studied rival strategies till his eyes were sore, but this one employed gadgetry he'd never seen before. Normally he'd be crushing, even though he's playing black. This time White was rushing to a fierce king side attack. Nikolai felt pressure that he prayed he could keep hidden. Sergei grinned like a Cheshire cat who'd ate something forbidden. Nick's pieces had no place to go. Where had he gone wrong? That sneering, sniveling, evil foe has locked him in Zugzwang. Usually, Tiov's domination of all the 64 forced opponent's resignation when he couldn't take no more. This here game was causing him dismay and consternation. Danger loomed in Tiov's brain, fought with overconcentration. Steam rose in him from toe to crown, brain circuits overloaded. He turned green and sickly brown. Then his head exploded. Kerplow! Or some Russian word for a loud explodey sound. By now that awful noise was heard at every board around. Then his brain began to splatter. The chessboard was a fright. Gooey gobs of gray matter amidst the black and white. Sergei gave no reaction. He just sat there in shock. In a rare show of compassion, he switched off Tito's clock. Like Rembrandt's strokes, they say he moved. His art was pushing wood. But Russian folks say Tito proved too smart for his own good. The match to watch, the TV said, but it turned out disgusting. No one wants to deal with heads spontaneously combusting. 
Dr. Martinenko, brain expert, presented his diagnosis. Nikolai had suffered hypercerebral electrosis. Don't think too hard, just take it slower. This can happen to you. The Weekly World News said so. So you know it must be true. Thank you. Oh man, awesome. I started yeah. thinking too hard, man. I got nervous. I got nervous for a second there. <laughs> My, oh yes, yeah, so, and I missed the line in there, but whatever. It's all good. Um, cool. So you know, we'll we'll have another chance for you to 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 do that again at some point, especially if you come into town to, to share some words. You know what I'm saying? I am. I'm coming to town. Sweet, awesome, man. Um, so what else? Until then, you know, is there anything you'd like to promote or share on the show? Until then, I'm not yet. I'm working. You can see me on YouTube and Facebook, Urban Cowboy Poetry. I got to record some more videos for that. Get my website back up. Start getting my book published to a publisher, whatever. But nothing to report right now. For sure. Right on. We'll look forward to that. So until then, we can follow you on, on those on those places in Urban Facebook Cowboy Poetry. You. There you go. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Glad you're here, man. It's, it's so good to have a lot of you guys just come here a week out, like regulars, and seeing what you're, what you're doing. And it's, it's nice to, like, recognize pieces and, like, have favorites and, like, l- you know, get to check out the new stuff. Um, yeah, always yeah, good. Man. Always fun stuff. Uh, okay. So, yeah, we're going to continue uh, traveling around as, as we do on these online open mics. And it's, it's so smooth and easy. We're not constrained to the, to the walls of a venue. We're everywhere, right? We're timeless. We're there on, in, we're on YouTube. We're on the internet. We're on waves. Uh, we're going to go to, to the West Coast uh, again and, and welcome back up a righteous poet. Let's go ahead, Abraham Kamani. Welcome back, man. Hey, Richie, thank you for having me here again. Thank you for all of you guys who performed before me. I haven't made a lot of comments, but I was listening as I was doing other things around the house. So I'm gonna share three with you guys. Uh, this first piece is a piece that I wrote in response to a journal article read by a scholar named Hazel Carby called Policing Black Women's Bodies in an Urban Context. And this one is titled Agency Under Surveillance. Elite ebony eyes painstakingly policed the day-to-day movements of black working class women's bodies migrating from down south to up north, seeking empowerment and critically acclaimed promised lands only to have their agency under surveillance inside settlement homes located in the belly of densely populated impoverished black belts built by middle-class mothers of racial uplift with with well-meaning intentions to serve their transplanted inhabitants with the doctrine of respectability politics, defining good moral character based on religion, education, and profession, doctors, lawyers, social workers, teachers, pastors, politicians, looked up to as role models, authoritarian figures, dignified pillars of power in the black community, club women, social reformers took it upon themselves to protect their less fortunate, more vulnerable, distant daughters from the citadels of vice and exploitation and the heart of red light districts, saloons, gambling houses, dance halls, brothels, frowned upon as criminal enterprises to be demolished, adult entertainment professions of dancing and sex work condemned as far less honorable than performing as a maid in the homes of wealthy white families, unsafe domestic spaces where interracial relations were marred by the sheer brutality of coerced miscegenation dating way back to the antebellum era on Southern plantations. Enslaved ebony maids denied free agency under surveillance of their ivory masters and mistresses. Several generations later, their great granddaughters were held captive, confined to postbellum plantations in every region of the United States, stripped from ownership of their bodies to suffer the same vicious trauma of being raped 
as did their great grandmothers. What was a poor ebony woman to do when just about every ivory tower slammed its doors in her face and the only one to remain open used her as a symbol to flaunt their status without ever placing value on her humanity? It's too bad the gaze of the black bourgeoisie were blinded by their own moral compass, unable to see black female sex workers in a different light other than promiscuity, that the choice to sell their bodies was not a matter of mere economic survival, but part of a larger black liberation struggle to reclaim the pleasure of agency under surveillance. And that's the first piece. And the next two pieces I did as part of a workshop I participated in last Tuesday. So this one is called A Lion King of Great Courage. Simba, I aspire to represent every, I mean, excuse me, Simba, I aspire to represent what you stand for as a warrior, a lion king of great courage, never the one to back down from a fight for righteous causes, standing up to oppressive forces out to obliterate my existence by any means at their disposal. Though the powers that be are mighty, they are not stronger than my voice, roaring loud and clear for them to hear. Their weapons formed against me will not prosper in silence in my battle cry, demanding vengeance to unleash her terrible wrath of justice on all the scars for toss of Mufasa's off of cliffs in front of their cubs, watching them fall to their death with a sinful smile, showing no remorse. Unapologetic killers, loose cannons held unaccountable by a fixed system in need of being dismantled for failing to enforce laws on law enforcers, not bending but breaking the very same rules they are supposed to honorably uphold while being backed up by corrupt politicians, bought out, sold out for a seat in office? Why not abolish prisons if the vanguards of capitalism can get away with crimes, keeping most common criminals enslaved in cells for months, years, a lifetime? Might as well release everyone from behind bars to the forefront of justice in street court. Let revenge be the judge to decide who is worthy of being restored back into the free will and who should be sentenced to death by being tossed off the cliff for the traumatic scars they inflicted on the most vulnerable of people. And the last one, I haven't thought of a title yet, so it's still untitled. My nose can smell trouble from a far away cooking recipes for disaster with the ingredients of alcohol and drugs, feeding uncontrollable appetites under the influence of lust, penises and vaginas exchange bodily fluids, drink each other up like a glass of cold water from a faucet, contaminated, though it does not show any obvious signs. Secretions look normal, smell normal, taste normal, but are definitely poisoned, not by rocks, pills, powder, liquor, but by sexually transmitted diseases, unidentifiable to the five senses. Yet, my nose can smell selfishness from a far away, spreading positivity around like good news, no one will kill for but will die from. Plus signs crucify those infected all over the world, Newborn babies are not exempt from being nailed to the HIV AIDS cross. Even so, my nose can smell hope from a far away. Listening to the stories of those afflicted by this life-threatening virus, speaking common sense to those engaging in behaviors, putting them at risk that they may be saved from meeting this deadly fate. End of the pieces. Mm, man i know i know it's your your instagram name but you put the right in righteous you know and the pieces you you share definitely kind of have that to it uh abraham where can people follow you online and support your work oh uh, so i have two igs the righteous port you know that's spelled w-r-i-t-e-o-u-s and black scholar poet 
and I'll put that in a chat. Uh, awesome. Yeah, man. I really appreciate uh, the topics that you, you bring up, you know, and, and talk about like the, the, the times you've been coming through. So, and it's also, dude, you're outside right now, man. I'm envious. How, how is it? Is it nice outside? Man, it is rainy as hell out here right now. <laughs> oh, is it? It doesn't come out oh, and come yeah. through too much. But uh, yeah, well, thanks for joining us again, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. You guys are always welcome here. So let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, about like seven or eight spots left. Uh, so we're just going to kind of keep the momentum going. Uh, we're going to stick around in Cali and go to Los Angeles and uh, visit Mr. Disosomok, who, uh, yo, uh, I did a podcast last week and it was cool. You were, you were tuning in and, and leaving some comments. So I really appreciate that. And uh, you're going to share some words and some music as always. So guys, let's go ahead and take the, taking the stage up next, we got Deso Somok. All right. So, Mr. Kamani talks. All right. I can hand over the uh, hand over the title now of the Profe, Profe Kamani. Good job, buddy. So, I, I, uh, I asked uh, Matthew Marroquin to stick around. So, this song is uh, dedicated to him. And um, if you know the lyrics, you are obviously welcome to unmute and join. Just sit right back and hear a tale, tale of a faithful tree. Standing from this tropic board aboard this tiny ship. The name was a mighty sailor. Sail at day three hour two. Three hour two. The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tough. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the men no would be lost. Ships aground ashore on this uncharted desert island with Gilligan, the skipper, too, the millionaire and his wife, the movie star, the professor, Marianne, here on Gilligan's Island. So, this is a tale of a guest. Is it because of the hat? Is that why you played it for him? Yeah, they, remember, they, always, they always say he's like he's Gilligan. Where is he? He probably fell asleep. Anyway, I figured you guys would enjoy that. I did. I, yeah, awesome, that was the man. best uh, cover of that song I've ever heard. Because... That was lit. <laughs> yes, I grew up watching the v for the urban poet to jump right in. The urban cowboy. Here on Gilligan. Yeah. Yeah. Three yeah. hour two. There three you go. See, you got it done. The movie star, the professor, and oh. Mary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I, I think we're, we're, uh, we're uh, what do you call it? 
out, we're dating ourselves. Everybody's like, <laughs> yeah. I grew up watching the reruns. <laughs> Andy, Andy, Andy Griffith yeah. show too. That was the show. <laughs> Yeah, so right, I was, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do this last song. Um, this is a what traditional is song. Um, I guess they would they would call it under the uh, under the waltzes, but it's uh, it was like the appropriation of the waltzes by indigenous people, and this is typical of the Wantepec, uh, Oaxaca, and then um, the so so it, there's a lot of versions of it, and there's like different different um different stanzas like different people have different versions of it but i'm gonna do this version because it's because we're getting ready for dia de los muertos and i need to press i'm gonna torture you guys i think some of you have already been tortured by this song <clears throat> Me muero 
Tápame con tu rebozo y orona, porque me muero de frío. Besos llevo en el alma y llorona, llorona, que no se apartan de mí. El último de mi madre llorona, llorona, y el primero que te di. El último de mi madre Yeah, I love it, man. I love the last chord, and then and then the, you got the string afterward. Oh, oh my God. it's a great combo. <laughs> cool, man. Always Thanks. a treat, Mr. Tesla Mode. Always a treat. <clears throat> Hope you guys enjoyed that. This is a very traditional song, and uh, you'll typically hear it around this time of the that year. That was beautiful, Tez. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anything you'd like to plug or promote right now? Uh, so you can catch me on Instagram under Gashes2019. You can get a copy of my book, Gashes, uh, and off of Amazon if you look for Gashes and Tesla Somok. And also, I have something coming up on November 1st and 2nd with Dane. Uh, we have, uh, we'll probably be doing uh, uh, Dia de los Muertos uh, feature from our people around the world. So it should be really interesting. Thank All you. right. That's cool, man. Yeah. Any links that, that you can share would be, would be great for that as well. And uh, the pandemic poets, if you guys are on Facebook, go check that group out. Um, a lot of people share their events there. It's a, you know, good opportunity to see uh, what people are posting. Um, <clears throat> you know, you, you played that song and, you know, it, it is a, it's a very popular folk song. And uh, it reminded me of, like about a year ago, November 1st or 2nd, we had a, a show and a lot of you guys weren't part of this community yet. A lot of you guys were still, still uh, finding us or hadn't found us yet. So we had, um, we have a, a singer songwriter in town called, uh, called, his name is Jonathan Contreras. He goes, he goes to the live open mics and he, uh, he's done this one a couple of times and uh, he did a cover of that. That was really cool. In fact, he, he also added some poetry that his father had written. So it was a nice tribute. <clears throat> to his father um in fact yeah I, I back in the day i also used to like uh share clips of the open mics you know so that's i just actually posted a link on on uh on the chat right there so you guys can check it out because it's it's such a beautiful song and tez you you did a great job on it it's it just does wonders uh, i also appreciate the gilligan's island that was good i did not i did not expect that one that one threw me off <laughs> Uh, but uh, that's always fun, as you, as you can see. You know the, these little things. Like we, no one's gonna bring that up in conversation. But you, as you saw, a lot of us experienced it, like growing up or watching reruns, and yeah. and have those memories. So it's a cool, another way to connect with yeah. everyone. So, uh, did we lose Matthew? We might have lost Matthew. He may have passed out. You know that he's in farm town. So. Yeah, I know. It's a couple times now where he's he's kind of signed up last minute, and then then it's, it gets late. So I'm I'm gonna have to probably 
push him up a little bit next time. But uh, yeah, shout out to Matthew. If you are watching on YouTube by any chance, uh, and either way, sweet dreams, you know, connecting dream world. Uh, and Matthew, you're doing, he's doing cool stuff too, to promote his book. Um, um, I, as I see, you know, up to, following him online. So let's go to the list then. Uh, we're going to go to Malaysia. <laughs> That's right. We're just going to casually go to Malaysia just like that. Boom. Right. And we're going to say hi to Julian Matthews. And you want to share screen? You absolutely can. Uh, great to have you, man. Welcome back. Uh, go ahead and take it away. It's yours. The stage is yours. Hi. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Um, I'm just going to show share a, a collab with uh, uh, which I did with Selena Tiber. Um, I don't know whether how the volume will come through, so hopefully it'll be okay. Can everyone see that? Yes. Parallel lives. Maybe we knew each other in past lives. I was a horse and you a unicorn. This is why our cans in this world are like canters. We are maybe strutting in different directions. We are don'ts galloping across the horizon. As if the grass were grander on the other side. Maybe we were insects. I was an ant and you a dragonfly. You hovered then paused on a leaf. I scampered around you like a frantic puppy, nipping lightly then backing off until you peered at me with those googly eyes, searching for some reciprocation. Then you flew off. Maybe we were the tortoise and the hare. I, slow and steady, you, fast and frenzy. There was never a race, only a blur glimmer of my ancient face as you sped by. Then I was run over and you were gone. Maybe we were the Sphinx and the Pyramid. I was pointy-headed and looking up. You were regal and lounging serenely looking yonder. I was burning in the sun. You were tanning after a run. And then the sandstorm hit us and we were buried under and long forgotten. Maybe we would never ever meet again in the next life and the life after that life and the life after that life. Maybe these fleeting moments are all we have. No pharaonic beginnings, fairy tale endings, or a sopian also rants. Just this poem and our cans.
Julian, that was amazing. Wow. <laughs> Don't kill it. Wow. Yo. I, so I love that. Inspired. That was so cool. So good. That yeah. was just all of it. Letting your work speak, speak for itself. That was just so awesome. Thank you. Yeah, man, the poem the poem is, is just great. But then you went and add all the media to it to to bolster it up. Um also that website needs to sponsor you because I feel like <laughs> people are gonna go check it out now and like <laughs> you know, get a little cut from them. Uh but that was amazing. Um I didn't get to ask you last time because you, you, you kind of bounced out early, but your background is super interesting too. Like, is that a sp- like is that what place is that? behind you on your on your screen there oh uh, it's it's a fake thing oh Sorry to disappoint <laughs> you. no i knew that but like what is it what is it a picture of i have no idea it's some uh, it appeals to the, the side of a mountain ah gotcha gotcha that's cool it appeals to the inner adventurous hobbit in me uh but but uh any would you is there anything you'd like to promote or share before before we move on I don't. Uh, it's a shout out to Selena Tyler for collecting me to, to do the song. I think it's just amazing. Thank you so much. All right, thank Bye. you. Oh man, my my internet was bugging out on me, so I feel like I, I missed all that. But if you can, can you put put that info in the chat as well, so I can maybe share it to YouTube channel. YouTube channel. I said that strangely. Um, anyway, Julian, that was really cool. That was a whole experience, man. Appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, okay, cool. We're going to keep going around and we're going to get back to the States, to the Boogie Down Bronx, where finally we've got a storm brewing and we have La Tormenta back on the mic. Yo, work your magic. The stage is yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you for the space. Thank you for everyone who's gone before and after me. Oh my God, not the spotlight. Okay, I just have one short piece. <sighs> the pen of another man. I used to question why you continuously choose to leave a broken door open, why a stolen token of affection is all you have to offer and why this used to feel familiar, why this used to be okay, why you repeatedly let a child play with fire even after seeing desire isn't the cure here, isn't it clear here, this be an addiction of the worst kind. We wake up the worst kind of blind after I leave the third time, I'm usually not allowed back. I question why you live to disprove this fact, why the train tracks of my scalp only called to be oiled by you. What does it feel like writing with a pen that belongs to another man and how long till we confess to this new God's plan and how many more poems after the last one that says she was the last one to pour out for you knowing the thick chance of it being only half true. May this poem take me straight back to you one more time. May this poem grow tired of crying after readdressing poetic lies. May another man's pen give me life. May my knees never again go weak when you say that you miss me. So say that you miss me. Say I'll find another way to see you in your dreams. Say you don't dream of of me anymore so I can dust this poem off the floor. I used to question your obsession with broken doors. Thank you. And you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, Medium, Amanda Ashley Vienna, because I know you're going to ask me, but thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yo, make some noise for Amanda. La Tormenta. Yes, babe. Yes. <laughs> Amanda, she's the best. You're the best. You're the best, Kevin. Stop it. Te amo mucho, querida. What? Oh, man. Those so lines the flow the lines like yo straight up thank you i'm glad you i'm glad you're here you know for this and, and sharing um hmm. sometimes you just gotta take a collective breath all right, all right world we ready 
um all right yeah we got some more peeps we got like about three or four more peeps so we're actually gonna head back southwest and and uh join our friend who's also gonna be joining us live in person on the 22nd as part of the i'm calling it by the way i never even mentioned what it's called i'm calling it the southwest shakeup although technically you know that's where we're kind of meeting meeting gathering uh you know the poet connect uh, and also she's rocking the, 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 I see it, the, the blue mermaid get up. Oh, I went on the street. There was a, there was a erotic open mic tonight. So I think you're going to share a little bit. Oh, we got Kemlin in the house. What's up, Kemlin? <laughs> Hello, Richie. Thank you so much. I, I would like to, uh, do a little teaser for our, you know, wonderful event. And so for those of you who are now Paso, I like to call us the Three Furies. We have Marisa Prada. We have you guys' lovely poet Khan or uh, the fishnet poet. And then you get the Blue Mermaid. So I'm going to be uh, sharing a few pieces with you. Uh, by the way, oops, I, I always need to forget that um, to change my background if I'm going to uh, share what. So. Facebook, uh, Kimlin Tom Bappy, Instagram, Kimlin Bappy, Twitter, Kimlin Bappy, Linktree.com, Kimlin Tom Bappy. So come find me and uh, I'll go back to the ocean. All right. Okay. So I'm a math teacher. So let's do a little bit of naughty math. Bell curve. You teased me and called me deviant appreciating my undulating curvature in bed. I consider it standard deviations. At first glance, it appears to be an oxymoron, but I would like to believe that I'm a deviant with high standards. Exquisite taste, after all, we are here. I'm nibbling on your mind and choice words for amusement. Let's explore my findings. We appear within the normal range in society's eye under its acceptable norms. But after dark, beneath the shadow verse, nocturnal, feral, like cats, we steal out a box with whiskers. How low can we go? Let's set baselines. Consider what benchmarks to hit, crawling over quartiles, first base, second base, third base, home. Considering the quotidian rising beyond my mean, better my median, sustaining my mode over and over and over again. Yes, please, one more time. Then comes that once in a lifetime high, I climbed Everest Peak for you are my summit, my highest outlier, as you claim my bell curves. Now I'm gonna do a, a little a teaser from my mermaid set. Say my name. Sailor, prince, you wish to speak my name. Mortal, this goddess shall grace thy wish. Softly aspirate and add ing, ting. Still mumbling, tongue tied. <laughs> this won't do. How will you scream my name in worship? Let me school you. Feather the rim of the double symbol, high top. Ooh, love me a drummer. Why get a single when you can have a double? Syncopate with me. My turn. Your turn. My turn. Hold breath. Sigh. Release. Ting. Your turn. Hold breath, sigh, release, ting. Invoke my name five times. Crescendo, pianissimo, to portissimo. Ting, 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 ting. Bravo, my guppy. You've been spelled. Every breath inhaled, you will exhale my name. Now, what else would you like to be schooled in? 
Time and again I longed for adventure. I censored myself from desire, caving in something to make my heart beat much faster. Awakened with throbbing, pounding, weakening. What did I long for? I never really knew this desire. Blow out, match doused, fire burning. Finding your love, I found my adventure. Arousal, smoke signals, danger ache within touching your hand my heart beat much faster this is bad but it feels so good i am peeking all that i want in all this world is you stop don't stop bodies naturally responding you are the promised kiss of springtime you kiss me damn you fool i'm damned you slip in this makes the lonely winter seem long. I am cold. You blanket around me, gift wrapping. You are the breathless hush of evening. Breathe, breathe, breathe. My chest rises and falls, climaxing. That trembles on the brink of a lovely song. Say my name. Can't fight anymore. I am too. You are the that lights the star the dearest things i know are what you are someday my happy arms will hold you and someday i'll know that moment divine when all the things you Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that was beautiful, though. Holy <laughs> shit, that was awesome. Yes, it's just polished and gorgeous and well thought out and just talented. And yes. Indeed, indeed. One of my favorite things about these open mics is you can just get lost in someone's words and someone's inner worlds and their work and uh yeah blue mermaid blue mermaid you definitely made a splash um <laughs> see us, please i'm gonna bring my full get up and you know I, i'm gonna perform my heart out for you all and uh i've got three features coming up i have uh doc jannings uh, uh on my nights on uh october uh 17th i have uh time to arrive with dane ince at on the tw uh, 26th and then uh, David Sawaz, uh, um, lunchtime uh, open mic on the spoken world online on November 9th. So I've got, and Marissa Prada and I are working on a one woman show coming up for me. So I'm really excited about that project. A, a one woman show and two, yeah. two people working on it? Yeah. It's two women. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm really oh. excited. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, Marissa Prada is my producer. Yes, but yes, it's fun. <laughs> and yeah, they're working together you, as okay. one. Uh -huh. Absolutely, that's what that's how it's going to succeed. That's the only way you can succeed. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> awesome, Camlin. Thank you. No, that's not that's not the only way. That's that no, like, it's uh, one of the many yeah. options. You know, you, you know, mm -hmm. life is full of options. You know, it's nice. <laughs> I like. It. Awesome. Uh, yes, Kemlin. So looking forward. I mean, you so you got thank you for throwing all that stuff out there as well. Um, uh, future dates and things going on. Um, yeah, the Southwest Shakeup. Be on the lookout for that. I think I'm going to make an event page on Facebook for that just so we can kind of keep track of what we have going on because it's Friday night reading um, Saturday tumble words uh, visiting my studio so you guys can record videos. Uh, I got Ooh. some 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 drummers, some homies. I'm trying to connect with them and see if they're available on Saturday, so we can do some drumming and poetry at the park. Um, we'll work on it. We're we'll, you know, so let's go ahead and get through this show because you are, you threw out his name right now, so it's perfect. Uh, Doc Jenning, you made his way here to the show, so now is his time to shine. Joining us from South Euclid, Ohio, we have Doc. What's up, man? You made it. I was I was worried. Yeah, got if I may, but if I made it, make it, I've got to clean it up too. 
fair enough. Fair enough. Enjoy Take it away. Okay. I am a stormy sea and a teardrop and a roaring fire in a matchstick. I am a lion's roar in a kitten's mew and the raging hurricane in a gentle zephyr. I am a mountain peak in a grain of sand and the weight of the universe in a single feather. I am a mighty oak in a tiny acorn and all of evolution in a single cell. I am fiery passion in a tender kiss and love undying in a gentle heart. I am earth, I am nature, and I am human. This is Darshan. And Darshan is a Sanskrit term meaning uh, you viewing something and it views you at the same time. Uh, usually applied to viewing the statue or image of a god and knowing that it is viewing you. Silent argent reflection of sun, silver streaming midnight mandata, star prick velvet shadows, darshan embrace of moonlight, meditate on their meaning, accept what they are within, drink deeply of night's wisdom, and dream of what yet may be. And I will finish with remembering what I cannot. I stand in a paradox of being at the granite border of infinity, amid memories which never were, obsessed from myself. Reflecting on unfathomed lives, echoes of lives long past, and whispers of those yet to be, searching for me. In the distant roar of the present, among watery ruins of the past, moments whirl, blindfolded, into an unknown, into an unknowable future. Foreshadows of dimensions abound amid Chthonian skies and shadows of the never was, quest for veils of understanding. Forever starting over, forever finding myself in profound nights and clouds of longing, remembering what I cannot amid hidden skies of forever, I peer through veils of time, seeking what is lost. Thank you. Yes, Doc. Awesome. You guys know yeah, what's up. Uh, Make some noise. Celebrate. Awesome readings, man. Those are good. I like the first one. It's like polar opposites. I dig it. Yeah, man. That's such a, a poet laureate tapping into like universal thoughts, you know, and like what, what connects us in that way. Uh, Doc, do you have anything that you have coming up? Did you like to promote or share or well, ways we I, can connect? I already posted it and Kenlin uh, reposted about uh, next Saturday, the 17th at uh, 2.30 Eastern time. Uh, we have my event, Awanites. It's derived from the uh, Welsh word awen, A-W-E-N, and uh, that which means, depending on context, either a bard or poetically inspired. So we're all uh, on that show. We're all bards or poetically inspired. Oh, that's awesome. I, I never heard of that before. Awen, that's cool. Thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, okay, and I missed it in the chat too. So, so my bad. I'm so sorry about that. Um, all right, thank you, Doc. Thank you. Um, cool. Um, let's see. So, this is the part of the night where I, I mentioned that we do have a couple open spots. So, um, before we get to our closer, I see that we have at least um, one person who hasn't signed up, but of course, is always 
welcome to spit if they feel it if they feel legit they always are uh, but does con i mean sorry the fishnet poet want to spit a little something if you'd like if not that's fine you know uh there's plenty of time so i don't know if you're if you're listening because i know because i know i know i know i know let's see just do a quick call if not maybe you can also go after. yeah <laughs> um maybe not you can also just let me know in the chat but it, either way okay then in that case um it's, it's no good when she's away ain't no, ain't ain't no, no sunshine. sunshine when she's gone that was my subconscious pulling that out yeah. when i when i pulled out the i know i know i know yeah, i yeah. know that's i know how mine work. that's how <laughs> my my brain works Songs. right Hey. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you hey. caught that. Yo. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Ooh, I had to go find my phone real mm. quick. Hey, y'all. Good evening. Good Wonder evening. where this time she's gone. <laughs> um, I had this love piece that I wanted to share. If I could find it real quick. Yes, um, it's Poet Khan. Yes. Oh, I am. <sighs> I guess I should give a little visual. Huh? It's a little sensual poem in the night. You know what I mean? Well, before Dan, before Dan. Oh, before Dan, right? Okay. No space, just lace. Body so close, your lashes are on my face. Kisses that dismiss my sorrow, tongue in, out, down my throat, calling me tomorrow. No space, steady, pace our bodies bumping grinding finding new ways to hump grind time the space between us invisible layer bent and crooked window into the soul no stories untold lucid we ebb flow nose on my nose no Space between us, just traces of ripped lace, a steady pace to give, receive, you and me together. Thank y'all. That's the piece. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Woo! Awesome. Love it. <laughs> Wait, did you have more, or I wasn't sure? Right. Uh, he said no. No with no words. The back of his shirt, his jeans, his jeans, his shoes, his back to me in a Zoom room. One poem he read one time left me for the polar opposite. Funny how you are equally fond of blonde. I already knew he was gone. Undressed me with stay with me tonight, Con. Those hazel eyes left me with my daydream memories, confused straighted similes, nutted before me. Oh, those obvious fuckboy signs. He came to come, proclaimed his lust slash like that I hoped would crust over into love. He was sublime, but that brilliant mind was never ever mine. No, you were too broken for my love. Thank y'all. All right. Thank you. 
Uh, do you want to plug the the Erotic Mondays? That seems uh, like a, it's a thing now, right? It is officially a thing now. Uh, every other Monday. Next, guess what, Richie? Next one Monday, we are feature- featuring the Donna Snyder. She is going to come bring the house down with her desire, damn it, because it is necessary and lovely and beautiful. And um, we had Nepal Flower today. She's an, an IG poet who is awesome. She's been here before. She's been here, yes. Hell yeah. yeah, she came and did her thing. So we've been having a really good time the last few, two uh, the last two shows. It's been well received. So I really appreciate y'all for uh, receiving us, all my beautiful poets coming to hang out and um, be prepared for this Southwest takeover that's about to happen in two weeks in the El Paso. It's going down. Yeah. The Southwest shake up. <laughs> the Southwest shake up. <laughs> it's gonna be great. And uh, yeah, I believe I've, I've procured a venue too for Sunday, like a brunch venue, uh, yeah. which if you want, you can host. Uh, we talked yeah. about it, so we're planning, we're planning. We'll, we'll be talking about it in the upcoming weeks. So thank you so much, Fishnet Poet, a.k.a. Khan. Um, you know, I, I, I put the two different identities. It's like in wrestling, you know, when, some become, when someone becomes like an alter ego. You know, that's the way I see it. Bray Wyatt versus The Fiend. You guys, yeah, if you know, yeah. you know. That's the way I see it. <laughs> um, okay, so thank you. Uh, and to go ahead and end the night as we do uh we're gonna go to australia where our next performer is coming from uh let's go and welcome dan the man to the stage uh dan what's up man yeah. how's how, how is it over there how's what over there australia <laughs> That's, uh, well, i wish i was there <laughs> Yeah, no, no. We have to consult our resident memologist Nico Kim to understand the Australian upside down meme. Um, oh no! Wow, well, because you're upside well, down. That's the joke. Halloween. Well, Halloween's coming. Why not? T- why not turn something spooky upside down? Or yeah, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Okay. Uh, first things first. Yep. Ugh. Life is going upside down since yesterday. Um, since yesterday, I was a victim of a fender bender. I got hit. Uh, luckily, no one was hurt. It was just a little boom. Or a or a boom. And my brother was all, oh, come on. Uh, this is horrible. Yeah, I can't believe it. We just barely got out of the, barely got out of the scratch or that we finally fixed it. Uh, we got the paint done, but, oh man. But then we did not expect three days later, yesterday. Boom. Oh, oh this is going to suck. Oh well. Anyway, but, um, anyway, uh, I guess I'm already halfway there of hang on. Where do they go? We go. Hang on. I'm trying to get a click. <laughs> Think. Uh, well, I'm just halfway there. Well, we're just halfway there. If you guys, if those of you in El Paso has not yet, has not yet, uh, has not yet come by. Well, I everybody heard the West Haunted Trailers the best. The West Haunted Theaters is becoming the best. It got some great reviews. And oh yeah, I'm still getting paid. It's scaring the wits out of. Whoosh. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, you guys want info on the KLQ haunted house? There it is. <laughs> oh, no, I, I already had that promoted on my blog, so uh, I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, I'll give you the number. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> me, <sighs> and oh man, I don't know what else is going, but we're. 
We're like um, in the middle of, we're almost to the middle of uh, Halloween. What, no, I mean October. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what's going on yet, but we'll have to wait and see. So, hmm. Ah, Mine's supposed to be a little bit of light. Or there's a mighty of a fight. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're already at the end of the night. This night. Uh, okay. And what I'm doing right now is I already, already voted the best of the city. And yeah, why is it? And get this. Why is Estella Costa still on the ballot? She's, uh, she, she's no longer an anchor woman. She's now on... She's now a spokesperson for Viva Auto, I see on commercial. Yeah, and I always thought, wait a minute, where's, Ho where's Holly Ba? Yeah, Bob, the best fitness trainer? Well, there's, there's Lizzie, but, and I said, wait a minute, where's Shane? Or, how oh come she's not on the ballot? <laughs> well, even if they were together, Shane and Lizzie Martinez, that would be nice. Yeah. And uh, I was hoping for Kali to be bet to be best musician or or the band, but we did get a few like um, as always Elia Sparza or um, Crystal Poppin like she won last year or uh, Damian Wilds I know of Emily Day our friend Emily Davis in the Murder Police, a Billy Free the Swell Kids Radio La Chusma. Um, among others. Oh yeah, fixed idea. I know very well. Hmm. Oh, well, I was hoping for a Chang of the three hundred six and ten second pistol, or uh, or who else I know very well. Hmm. Bree Bagwell. Oh uh, yeah. Well, she's considered El Paso's own, but hmm. well, Jim Ward. He would have been nominated. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'll have to wait and see. So um, I'll keep you guys posted. Okay, I guess that's it. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I know it's been a it's been a tough weekend already, but at least we're halfway through of. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. And again, my character classified. <laughs> I don't want to blow my cover, if you know what I mean. Yeah, because uh <laughs> yeah, I don't want to share that. I don't want to share that with anybody because once I'm assigned to there, but yeah, it was a it was a it was a pretty easy job. <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> yeah, standing up for three hours, then Friday and Saturday, five hours. Then, uh, then uh, Sunday, three hours. <laughs> well, at least everything's good. <laughs> but again, for those of you who have not gone there, please. But oh, we got till the end of October, last day's ha Halloween. Yep. So, guys, not miss it. Okay. All right. That is it. Hold on. Yay. Yeah, Dan, awesome stuff, man. Oh, oh, I, know, oh, oh. I know you still got the card coming up. It's fine. It's fine. Um, <laughs> there it is. You should just have that ready every time, man. There it is. Uh, here, we need a wee bit. Don't forget uh, the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the hashtag, and locate Dan the Man's Weekly. Find my, find my channel and. Uh, yeah, find my channel, subscribe it, and keep on watching. And I just up and uh, just um, I just uploaded the uh, uh, 790. I'm about 10 blogs away till I reach 800th episode. Yet another milestone. <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see. All right, cool. thank you, Richie. Thanks to everybody. Have a great <clears throat> night. See you next Monday. I'm going to talk about Candy Grants. All right. All right. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, man. Um, 
Yeah, I was hanging. I was hanging out with Dan in the upside down world, and I tried to drink some water. So I got a little bit of water on me. It's a little harder to oh drink boy. than I thought while well, hanging upside, upside down. down now. Um, yeah, no, I said earlier. Um, so, uh, man, that was like a live version of Dan the Man's Weekly again. His his weekly video blog, um, where he just goes over local events. So yeah. <laughs> local things to our national peeps but um you know thanks for tuning in another monday night october dang it's there you know um be ready for spooky season lots of events as you guys heard throughout the show i do want to thank people who tuned in and checked out all of youtube and if you stick around to watch this part of the show I love you guys. In fact, if you do, if you're listening to this right now on YouTube, I want you guys to type out in the comments, I was here. I was here on YouTube. Okay. So if you're listening to this right now, and uh, I'd be impressed, you know, if you're listening to this part. Um, But anyway, thanks to everyone who performed tonight. You guys has always rocked it. Amazing. Uh, We had a couple just reminders of how, how these spaces work, you know, some things to think about. Um, But moving forward you know let's keep this going we be, we'll be back next monday uh so for the stay at home open mic for the barbed open mic series for all these beautiful performers my name is rich and we will see you guys uh, next week peace oh, <laughs> a nice little dandy man hiccup to end the show